Welcome, uh, thank you, and may God bless you. I want us to start with a song. It is in the book of hymns, uh, 15. Yes, the book of hymns of salvation in uh, the 15th song. It says, he says all the promises of God as he has given them. They were strengthened by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us join together and sing this song.
murabera tuzata ni muhumurabera muri yisi si wacu tuzata ni muhumurabera yisi si wacu ye ni muhumurabera ni muhumurabera
The honor is yours, Lord Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be lifted up. You are our God. You are a God of power. You are a God of might. You are a true God. We praise you. We thank you that we have not known idols, but we knew you. We thank you that you have revealed yourself to us and we know you. We thank you that we know you. The honor is yours, Father. We thank you for the children you gave us, for the families you gave us. And they also know you. The honor is yours. We are about to enter a time when we lift up our families before you. Receive this prayer. Receive it, Father. Receive it. The honor is yours. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We praise God for this wonderful time. We praise God for this wonderful time. Today is day five. We are about to pray for the family. We bring the family before God. I believe that you are ready to carry your family before God. Let's read in 2 Chronicles 7, 13-14. Changwa ni ndege kinzige ngo zoni gihugu. Changwa ni noheleza mugiga mubanu banje. Maza banu banje biti wisi na ligianje ni michisha bugufi waga senga. Waga shaka umaso hanje waga hindu kila waka rikinge soza abombi. Na jenzu ufandi mwishu. Baba rilikichu minyochavo mbakirize igihugu. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Inzige, changwe se inzara. Izangwe ni inzige. The locust or the famine that is caused by locust. Ite ziwa za umuri yangu. It brings problems in the family. Ingo ota. The sword. Ariyo nambara. Which is the war. Ite ziwa za umuri yangu. It brings trouble in the family. Ndetse. Amapfa ikizu wa chinshi yo chabahi. Or even the drought, when it takes place, this brings up trouble among people. So when pestilence comes, and it enters a family, it also causes problems in the family. Families go through troubles regarding the economy. Because finances are not in, in a good uh, place, in a good shape, the families are, of the, the people of the family are uh, dispersed or they are troubled. When health is not good, it's hard to be patient. People can be angry or they can be frustrated because the other person is sick. So to be patient for a, someone who is sick becomes a problem. 
and the family has a problem. So the pandemic, sometimes it goes through a family. All these things show that the family is not in, in joy. But the Bible said, but if my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and they pray, and they seek my face. And they turn away from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will hear when they please. That is what we are doing in these 10 days, brethren. This is the fifth day. When we are before God, we have come to lift up our families before God. We have come to lift up our families. We are going to pray that the fellowship between a husband and wife may be restored. Between a husband and wife. May God bring fellowship. Because the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 22, all the way to 33, that we are called brothers and sisters and brothers Kuko turi ingingo z'umubiri we nico gituma umuntu azasigase na nyina akabana n'umugore we akaramata bombi bakaba umubiri umwe ibyo nubwira ubukomeye cyane ariko ibyo mvuga byerekeye kuri Kristo ni torero nuko namwe umuntu wese akunde umugore we kuko yikunda kugira ngo umugore nawe abone uko yubaha umugabo we Wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. <coughs> no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and his flesh and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Amen. So there are values that are required for a husband and wife to live together. And these values are godly values. The values the value of love and the value of honor. The Bible says, a husband loves love your wife. We pray for the husbands to love their own wives. And they must love their, their wives the love that Christ loved the church. Because the love that Christ loved the church has a few things. Number one, it has sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed himself for people who did not have anything to give him back. That's number one. The second thing that the love uh, that uh, Christ loved the church. Number two. 
It is death. He gave his own life for the church. The wife must die for his wife. The, the husband must die for his wife. That is the love that Christ loved the church. Number three. It is, it is to love us like he loved himself. So the husband must love his wife the way he loves himself. That is love. That Christ loved the church. Number four. Christ loved the church before the church loved him. He did not love the church based on their actions. He loved them when they were still in chaos. Because love goes beyond all things. So that's the way husbands are to love their wives. And we must love them with unconditional love. You don't love your wife because you're expecting things for, from her. You love them unconditionally like Christ loved the church. You say, I love the when she was still young and now she's old. I'm uh -huh. When she was still thin and now she's fat. Or I love the when she was beautiful and now she's not. So that's not love. You love someone, true love is love unconditional. I, I love this person when they still have a job, but now I don't love them because they are jobless. You love them when they have a job and when they don't have a job. You say, I love, I love my wife when she was not spending, and now because she's spending, I'm not loving her. That is not love. You love her when she spends, and you love when she doesn't spend. So you husband, you must love your wife. That is what we are about to pray for today. Love your wife as you love yourself. As Christ loved the church. As Christ gave himself for the church. You must also sacrifice yourself for your wife. As Christ died for the church, you must die for her. You are saying maybe these are theories. How can you die for someone else? If you see this as a theory, maybe your household is, is built on a theory. But if you want your household to be a true household, you must build on this value of love. And then you, wife, the Bible <coughs> says, uh, Submit to your husband. As the, as the church uh, submits to the, to the church. And he's also the head of it. The head thinks. The head leads. Submit to your husband. Obey your husband. Do not despise your husband. Because they don't have a job. Because they don't have money. Because they did not go to school like you. Or maybe they are not fulfilling their responsibility. It is possible that they may be lazy. They sleep all day. All day. But he's still the husband. Pray for him and for his change. Bring him before God. But do not let this be uh, an obstacle. Do not uh, let this be an obstacle for your responsibility. Because the church honors Christ. But what I'm saying, I am talking about the uh, the the. Uh, uh, husband and wife who are saved. If you have a husband <coughs> who is not saved, or a wife who is not saved, these things do not belong to you. Actually, you are about to die and to carry your cross. The Bible says, carry your cross and follow me. Carry your cross and carry your cross and follow me. 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 Continue to carry the cross of that husband and the wife if you can. The prayer we are about to do. 
it is for the husband to have the a heart of Christ and for the wife to have the heart of the church. These are the people that uh, the Bible is speaking about. I'm not talking about the one you met on the street. You did not do a, a, a wedding. There was no diary. But you are together and you fight all night long. You agree to love each other today. You agree to fight tomorrow. So that husband who is irresponsible, who is a drunkard, who sleeps outside, that husband is not the one the Bible is talking about. And this uh, wife who is, doesn't listen, who is like a prostitute, the Bible is not talking about her. She's also always walking around the neighborhoods. Uh, that person who is always around is not the one the Bible is talking about. Bible doesn't talk about that person so the Bible doesn't talk about the wife who goes around the neighborhood and brings gossip to cause chaos in, in households. That's not the wife that the Bible is talking about. Those wives, we are going to pray for them separately because they need serious prayers more than the normal prayers that we do. The Bible is telling us noble wives, noble husbands who are saved, who have divine values. So the Bible says that that love must increase, that that patience must increase, that, law, that obedience must increase. Those are households of people who are saved. But those who are not saved will pray for themselves. Or maybe one is saved, one is not. We will get to that place later. Let's read our first Peter. I'm talking about those who are saved. Peter 1 Peter 3 7. Let's start from five. Let's start from five. Let's Kimugirubgova, First Peter 3 5. For in this manner in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Mm. For the prayers not to be hindered, the husband must uh, dwell with the wife with understanding. The holy women of ancient times. The holy women of ancient times. <laughs> The Christians, we are talking about a household that has Jesus. The husband must love the wife. The wife must submit to the husband. And the wives should call their husband Lord. Lords. That's what the Bible is saying. You don't call him by the name. 
Hey, Tien, where are you? Hey, Tien, where are you? Oh, yeah. No. Ugomba kukumutsi indizi. You must not mention their name. Mutkwa aruraho. Lord, are you here? Are you, are you well? Hey, mfugi wingi wa wana, bubu ngubu ndi wabzumfu. Ongena nitu wa ungu, mutkwaru, mutkwari. When I say this, uh, uh, people, or young people of these days don't understand it. <laughs> they call and say, Charles, where are you? I cannot reach you on the phone. And no. that is your husband. The Bible says, call him, Lord, where are you? Even your tone must, be according, must go accordingly. Jacques, <laughs> you no, no, no. So, kwa They say, Jacques, why can I not reach you on the phone? Why did you shut? Why did you close it? That is not eh, holy. Urebi yura ala nje na kinze na ba na ba yetu rangi amiru vajak. Look for a place to sleep. I have closed the door. Me and my children. Oh yeah. No. No mugabo na wenda wama kuinjira. And the husband must not go in. Gwa fuge ngwari ko ugiru fuge ngwa mugore we. And say, are you? Are you? Uh, are you foolish? Okay. Among all the foolish women I've seen, you are among them. Husband, you must not talk to your wife like that. Oh, yeah. No. Don't insult your wife, or don't, don't insult your husband, and you, uh, wife, do not insult your husband. No. He's, he's wrong. Women who are saved, they call their husbands lords. And after they give birth, they call them the name of their children. Papa Enoch, are you, are you well? That was the respect, that was the foundation of household. But now it has broken down. <sighs> So you must do that so that your prayers may not be hindered. There is a way prayers cannot be heard when the couple is not in agreement. Among those things is the disagreement or the division between the husband and wife. That's what the Bible is saying in 1 Peter 3, 7. So we are about to pray for these families. The saved families. That God may increase their love in them. And He may also increase obedience. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bring this saved family. We bring this wife. We bring this husband. That you give them to agree. That this may be a husband. Bring the love in the husband. Bring obedience into the, in the wife. Bring respect, mutual respect. That each person will respect, each person will respect that, the other, that no one will despise the other. But let there be a completion and agreement. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of division. Between the husband and wife who are saved. We destroy it. We destroy it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bring peace into this house. Bring life into this house. Bring health into this house. Bring well-being into this house. Bring wealth in this house. Thank you, Father. That you are doing so, you have heard In the name of Jesus. We are going to pray for our families who are not saved. Maybe one is saved and one is not. Maybe the husband is saved, the wife is not. But the wife is saved, the husband is not. Let's ask for the will of God to take place in this family. That the one who is saved will be led by God. Will hear what the Holy Spirit is saying concerning their household. And also pray for this husband to be saved. And that they may know God. That God will bring salvation in the family. And also to pray for the one who is saved not to oppress the, the other one. And then God will bring his kingdom into this family. 
and peace will come. Unity will come. Let's pray for this. Name. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, we bring this family that is not saved. Bring salvation. This family, one is saved. Bring the salvation to the other. Bring patience to the other. That this one who is not saved. We pray that you remove the spirit of oppression to that one who is not saved. Uh, the one to despise the one who is saved. To not consider them as their wife. To not consider them as their husband. Uh, to despise them before their children, to despise them before their servants, to do evil to them, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you stop this evil plan, that they may be repentant, that they may be turning of their hearts, and salvation. We pray for this family so that you or only you will bring their kingdom and that your will may be done in this family. You know the end of every person. Bring a good end to each person. We don't want to have a bad ending to each person. Whether it's their wife or the husband. Give them a good ending. Give them freedom that allows them to pray to draw near you with no obstacle. We thank you that you have heard this word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray for fellowship, a good relationship between parents and children. Between our children and parents. And between children themselves. We are going to ask God to bring unity between the parents and the children. The children may obey their parents. And the children may obey their parents. And parents may, may be gentle towards their children. And that the children may love each other. Uh, they, so that there is no fight or hatred between them. Or jealousy between them. So that the children may uh, be in agreement. Ephesians 6, 1, 4. Ephesians 6, 1, 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Children, obey your parents. When a parent tells you something, listen to it. Do not consider yourself as if you know. That you think that you know. Because you speak a better English than your father or your mother, you think that you have more experience. Oh yeah. No. That parent God gave him to you. So that he can give birth to you and also raise you until you are an adult. So your parents always want the good thing for you. You must obey them. And they will lead you in God. They will lead you in the right ways. Listen. Listen, honoring your father and mother uh, causes you to live on the earth long. It is the commandment that has a promise. So there are ten commandments. But they don't have any promises. The commandment with the promise is the commandment for children to honor their parents. It is the first commandment with the promise. Uh, 
What does it say? It says, honor your father and mother that you may live long on the earth. Nukwango wukenyuka kumana gushobora kubari mwe na rimwe guterwa nuko atumvira bavye. So the premature death of a child may be caused by their disobedience to their parents. Hari byatuma kenyuka byinshi. There are many things that can cause them to die. Ariko niki kirimo. But this is one of them. Kutumvira bavye. To not obey parents. Ushobora gupfa kare. You can die premature. Kandi bashaka kubaho. Why you want to leave? You want to leave. There is a story that I read. About a young uh, musicians. One of them had a mother who was saved. One of them had a mother who was saved. And the young man went out. He took the car. And the mother asked him, where are you going, my son? We are going to party with my friends. We will dance and sing and enjoy. So how long will you be there? Say, so let us enjoy ourselves, mother. And the mother said, let me at least pray for you and commit you to God. And they say, we don't need prayers from you. Just pray for the trunk of the car because we are safe. We don't need your prayers. Just pray for the trunk. And the mother prayed. You, the story goes like this. The children, when, when they were on their way, they had an accident and they all died. Police When the police came on the scene, they found out that the only thing that was left intact were the eggs that were in the trunk. Normally, the eggs break first, but the car flipped around and they died. But because they say that the prayers need to go to the trunk, uh, the eggs were saved, but they died. That is a true story. You can Google it. Just enter the eggs that were saved in the trunk. Why? Because young people have stubborn heads. You speak a good English or a good French and you think that you are wiser than us. But you are small. We gave you we gave birth to you yesterday. And the other day your parents were cutting your umbilical cords and you were like small mice in our hands. No, no, Now you act like a giant and you just say, you old person. Don't tell me anything. Yes, we are old, but we we are wise, and we are telling you to to have a good life. We will pray for the children that they may listen to their parents, and you will live a long life on this earth. Amen. Amen. And we are going to pray for the parents that they may love their children. There are parents who are abuse. oppressed, who abuse their children. And they speak evil. They insult them. They overuse them. They send them in different places at the same time, and the child becomes confused. Do this. As they do this. 
as they are doing the first task, you send them to another place. And they are doing the second task, and you send them to another place, and you confuse the child. Or you confess evil words like, I will kill you. You fool. Look, they, they look like their uncle. Aunt. Their aunt. Because you don't uh, agree or you are not in good relationship with those siblings, you call them their names. The in-laws, yes. The sisters-in-law, you call them their names. Or maybe you, uh, you don't like the father-in-law or the mother-in-law. You say their nose look like the nose of the mother-in-law. Those are words that parents tell to their children regularly you look at your child and you say the, the family of uh, your father or your mother uh, is actually a bad family i hoped that you would turn out good but you are all the same those things affect the hearts of your children. And the child grows up hating. The child grows up the Because you are blame the child for the mistakes of their in-laws. Tero, ibzo saba. So that requires uh, that that mouth may be healed. Instead of insulting your children or imposing tasks that you could not do, you could not understand geography when you were young and now you want your child to understand it by force. You tell them, I want you to have 10 out of 10 in geography, but yet you, you had 1 out of 10. Where is the child going to have that wisdom? You must pray for the child to have that kind of intelligence. We you want your child to live in a space while you lived on this ground all your life. You want your child to do things that exceed what you did. You must ask God to do so instead. Uh, our, fathers, our fathers were righteous. Because they were noble. Um, they did not know Jesus, but our grandfathers were noble. Most of them will go to heaven because in their time, they were noble and they did their responsibilities. My father told me, he died uh, at nine years old. He died at nine years old. He told me that when he uh, was bringing salvation to uh, his country, his people, the Banyamurenge, the biggest issue they had it was alcohol and smoke. But, but they were like Christians. Because they had a culture of telling the truth. And they were uh, noble. They did not have to sign contracts. Instead, their word was considered as a contract. So they were righteous. More than some Christians that I see today. You pray, but you lie. We didn't know how to lie. A man does not break his word. When a, someone is a true man, they don't change. These are the proverbs they will give us. They 
they used to say a parent does not hate his child, but they give them what they could not do. Amuha amuraga ichamunani. They give them as an inheritance something that they could not do. Nizabza garaga zaka kwa yangu mana. That's what showed that they did not. Webza ramuna nera kwa kavu angwe uza kuri. They could not do something, and they will say, "You will do it." Orumfaneza. Listen. Now I'm saying. So you parent. We shaka kurunda umga nizaka kunani. Do not put things on your children that you could not do. Oramure merela. You are oppressing them. Oramure merela. You are oppressing them. We rigubuki rumuhungu. You tell your your son. Oki rigutu kumukoga wa. And you insult your daughter. Gwari kuzara rongo gwari yari. Ni uza na sabaga. He said, "When will you get married?" Is it, she's not the one who brings her. Have you prayed for her? Or you are going to which witches? Parents have good fellowship with your children. Pray for them. Love them. Do not curse them. Then you children obey your parents so that you may live long. Let's pray. God will bring the children and the parents in your hands. We ask you that to bring fellowship between them. Do miracles, Lord. We ask that the children may obey the parents. Give them a heart of obedience. We ask that the parents may love their children. That they will not oppress them. But instead live with, in peace and do great things, Lord. Do great, great things. Show your strength. Let your Holy Spirit come. Let your power come. Let your glory come. And open the doors. The doors of God. And fellowship. Between parents and their children. Between children and their parents. We thank you, Father. That you are bringing this harmony. That you are bringing this peace. In this house. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are about to pray the uh, single parents. And we're also going to pray for widows. And we are going to pray for orphans. We pray that they will be able to raise their children well. The Bible says in Proverbs 22.6, train up your child in the way they should go and they will not depart from it. So parents, start raising your children in the ways of God. We know that you are on your own. You don't have a partner to raise them. As a parent, your responsibility is to show your child the way of God. If they are not able to do so, bring them to God. But you have fulfilled your responsibility. The Bible tells us the way we should care for the widows and orphans. The Bible says in James 1 27, We Religion that God our Father accepts a pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Gusura infubzi na bafakazi. To care for the, uh, or to visit the orphans and the widows. Go mubiwa baro yaabo. In their distress. Go no kwiri inda kutandu zguanis. And to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Iridi jodi ni manishak. This is true religion. Tabuga ara mazina idi. It is not about the denomination. It is the good works. We must care for the widows. We must pray for God to bring people who care for them. We must care for the orphans. We must ask God to care for them. We must ask God to look after the single parents. That God may bring people to support them. The Bible says, do not afflict the widow or the orphans. Because when you do so, we, we have 
imibabaro you are calling upon yourself afflictions umva ijambo likomeye cyane riri mu gitabo cyo kuva 22 listen to uh, uh, the verse the important verse in exodus 22 21 24 from verse 21 to 24 ngo ndiye akagira umupfakazi cyangwa imfuzi imfubyi mubabaza nugira icyo wabaza na gato bakantakira sinzabura kumva gutaka kwawe uburakari bwanje bukagurumana kabikisha inkota abagore banyu namwe bakaba bapfakazi abana banyu nawo bakaba imfubyi you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child if you afflict them in any way and they cry out they cry out all to me I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will become hot, and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. So do not afflict an orphan. Do not afflict a widow. Do not afflict a widow. Because God can cause your children to be orphans, or you may become a widow, or your husband may become a widow. To afflict orphans is evil. And you are, you, when you are unjust towards them because they don't have a family. When you do evil to them because they don't have family, brothers and sisters. Ndetse no kurongora imfubyi warangiza ukayibabaza kuko uziko nta itagiri wabo Or even when you get you are married or you marry an orphan and you oppress that orphan because they don't have their own family Nguyu sazajaye Where would they go Ngo kari kondane kuba hano You say she's condemned or he's condemned to be Ngi kari kondane kuba They are not condemned to be there Imana yagatwara God can take them Na ukaba And you will be you Hanya mukasogongera imibabaro yise And then you feel the pain in this world Dusaba Imana so let's ask God. For forgiveness, uh, the, for the words we have said concerning the orphans and the widows and the single parents. To be singer. Let's pray. Those children who don't have someone to speak on their behalf. They have someone who speaks on their behalf. That one looks upon them day and night. The children who were abandoned by their parents. God looks after them from In Psalm uh, 27, on verse 10, the Bible says, my, even though my father and mother may forsake me, my fa the, uh, the Lord will take me. God will take me. The, parent, the children who don't have parents, God looks after them. We are going to pray for them. So that they are not oppressed, that they are not killed, and they are not dying. And that God may forgive the words we have spoken upon them. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you. We bring the single parents. The single parents. Including the widows. Including the orphans. Those who are not uh, we bring them that you may have compassion. Forgive those who have afflicted them. That they may change and do good to them. Remove the sword that is upon them because of the curse of doing evil to orphans and widows. Lord Jesus, forgive us for the things we have done, the things we have spoken about. That when we didn't care for tutaba, them. Tutaba, 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 tutaba when we did not good, do good to data. Forgive us. Data. Data. Forgive each person. Who spoke evil to this about this widow. Who spoke evil about this man who is a widow. Who spoke evil about this man who is a widow. Let your sword not come down to Give your forgiveness. Forgive those who have eaten the things of our own. They, uh, they took their hand. They took their animal. They took their cow. 
Forgive them. Because they have afflicted, they have uh, grieved your heart. Remember these children. Remember these widows. And bring them in your way. And do good to them, Father. I thank you that you have heard and that you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we draw near the end, we are about to pray for barren families. The barren families. That God may remember them. And we pray for those who need to be married, the men who need to be married, the, young, the women who need to be married. And we are going to pray at the end for that. And we pray for the spirit of poverty to leave families. Let's read in 1 Samuel 1, verse 1 and verse 5. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 and then verse 5. Bibiri ravuga ngo umutima wanje Wishimiru uwiteka ihembe ryanje rishirwe hejuru n'uwiteka akanwa kanje kagukiye kubanza ibanje kuko nejejwe nagakiza kawe abara abakungu barakinshuro kandi abara abashonje baradamaraye ndetse wari ingumba yabyaye karindwi kandi wabyaye benshi arakebye my heart rejoices in the lord in the lord my horn is lifted high my mouth boasts over my enemies for a delight in your deliverance those who are full hire themselves out for food, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. We are going to pray for barren families. We pray for uh, women who have miscarriages. We are going to pray for husbands who are barren. We are going to ask God to touch them and to do miracles. So that they will have a child. The Bible told us that the barren has born seven children. Seven children. May God give you children. Now heke. That you may also bear. That you may also breastfeed. That you may be called the mother of this of so and so. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, Father, that you bring children in this family. That you bring children in this house. If the uh, barrenness comes from a hus the husband, heal him. Mwami. Touch him, Lord. Kora Touch his body. Umuhe and give him the power to uh, give birth. Nibi if the problem has, is in, in the woman, ye. open the womb. Imiyoboro, tubes. The tubes. Zibura zara. Open the womb that they may get. Mizi yesu. In the name of Jesus. I pray that there should be no more miscarriage. In the name of Jesus. Give them to give birth. Uh, good children. That they may bear and rejoice. That she may be called mother of so and so. Father of so and so. We receive those children. We receive those children. In the name of Jesus. Lord we pray for all the families. Who are sick, who are, have sick people, that you may heal different diseases, cancer, cancer sida, AIDS, diabetes, diabetes rheumatism, rheumatism uh, tension, uh, tension, and other different diseases, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you do this, Father, heal, heal. This family that they may give birth well. We also pray for those who are single. We pray for the women who need husbands. The single women who, who need to uh, have a husband. The single men who need to have a husband. The widows who want to uh, regain the name of mother. 
mwizina rya Yesu in the name of Jabasabira ukingura ijuru I pray that you open heaven ukaba hamwami ibyimitima yifu that you give them what their hearts desire Turasaba bagabo we pray for husbands bavuye ku mutima wa who come from your heart Turasaba bagore we pray for wives bavuye ku mutima wa who come from your heart bikore data do it father bikore data do it father ongera ukore gitangaza cyawe do another miracle bongere bagushime that they will pray abakobwa bakeneye kurongorwa women who need girls who need to husband bahabagabo beza give them good husbands abahungu bakeneye kurongorwa uh, men who need to have uh, Bahaba Gorebeza. Give them good wives. Bazuba Kekurutari. That they may build uh, build on the rock. Arigo Yesu. Which is you, Jesus. Bazabzari. That they may give birth. Bazoroke. That they may multiply. Ibitumabadarongora. The things that cause them not to remove them in the name of Jesus. Remove them, Father, and bring them down. We thank you that you are God who is and that you are God who answers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are about to pray for God to remove poverty from the earth, that you will not lack food, uh, clothes, or even rent. And other different projects you may have. May God do this. Let's uh, walk in Psalm 37, 25. Uh, 37, verse 25. Let's uh, walk in Psalm 37, verse 25. Let's walk in Psalm 37, verse 25. Let's walk in Psalm 37, verse 25. I have seen, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his, nor his descendants begging bread in the street. begging bread in the street. May this word be your word. Kuva uyumuz. From today. Aba anaba. Let your children. Aba za kuva. Those who come. Aba za kukomoka. Those who come. Family ya. Your family. Ndimuza sabirize. You will never beg. Aba anaba ndiwa za baba maibo. Your children will never be homeless. Tuza agendu sabiriza uchi. You will never go begging around in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of poverty be a curse in your family. Oh yeah, No, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No generation. You, in, you do not inherit the poverty. The uh, poverty does not come from you. you. May it leave your house. You May it leave your children. Your household. You will not beg. You will not lack food. You will not lack clothes. In the name of Jesus. 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 We destroy the spirit of poverty. We bring it down. We destroy it. We destroy it. Your children. Will not be dogs, they will become great people. There will not be uh, people of no value. They will become great people. Shima yes. Praise Jesus. Until you are old. Until they are old. And uh, our grandchildren become old. You will not have anybody who is a homeless or begs. Anybody who lacks clothes. You will not lack money to live. To rent. The landlord will not take a uh, evict you because you cannot find rent. Those who come to collect will not come to collect your things because you're not able to pay. Oh yeah. No. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Uyu munsi. Uwo munsi wo gukora ni sezerano ni imana no muryango wawe. May this be a day of covenant between you and your family and God. Shimwe yes. We praise you Jesus. 
idufite gutinya habe na gato kuzima bwa cyuri muri we habe mu bya kunetse nuko aturi ni habe mu bya Thank you, Lord, that you do good. We cover all your fam the families with the blood of Jesus. We 